Hello, I'm Enter Elysium, and we're back in World War K. Uh, this episode, we have a Mechjub fuel convoy out near Juna, and we have to go destroy it. Um, so basically, we're going to have to make some sort of craft to go and attack that. It's a, a, just a fuel tanker, so it should be fairly easy to destroy, is my theory at least. So, I'm going to skip the building phase this time. What we have here is a VTOL craft. No, that's not a VTOL craft, uh, an SSTO. I keep saying VTOL today, I don't know why. An SSTO. Now, as you can see, it looks pretty awesome. Some air intakes, radiators on the side. It's powered by two uh, 1.25 meter antimatter reactors. Look at that beautiful cockpit. I, I did design this mainly around the cockpit. I wanted to use that cockpit. You saw me last episode go, I really want to use that. Uh, we've got the three air intakes there, and on the back you can see you've got two thermal turbojets and two plasma thrusters. The thermal turbojets can be used in atmosphere, and all they cost us is the energy to run them. The turbo, the thrusters use the lithium tanks under the wings. I would like to use Argon actually, but there's not a tank that's the right size. It's got three Hellfire missiles under each wing, so six in total. Uh, two of them are high explosive, and the last one I believe is an AP one. So if we have to shoot anything that's particularly strong. These come from the Skillful Weapons mod uh, pack. We also have two forward firing swarm missile launchers and two rear firing swarm missile launchers. And we also have four underwing cannons, which are 30mm, two of which run AP rounds and two of which are running high explosive rounds. Now, as you can see here, that one's got AP. I believe the ones in the center, yeah, they're running the high, high explosive ones. Now, it was a little bit difficult to get them on. I don't know if they're going to be uh, exactly converging their fire in the same place, but I think they should be okay mostly. Now, I was just saying before about the Argon tank, because I'd actually really like an Argon tank that was 1.25 meters, but the only Argon tank you can get in the Interstellar mod is 2.5, uh, which is, of course, way too big for this craft. Argon is really good for your thrusters. It gives you a really nice high um, thrust while giving you a decent specific impulse. So instead, I've gone for Lithium, which gives you a really high specific impulse, but less thrust. Eh. But let's just go launch it. Now, the good thing about this uh, SSTO is that the thermal tower jets don't need anything to run other than atmosphere. The uh, the plasma thrusters, because they're upgraded, they're quantum thrusters, they can just run off quantum vacuum. So they just need a non-atmosphere environment. So quite literally, this thing could go pretty much anywhere, provided it can take off the ground. So what we're going to do now is... Close the docking hold part. I don't know why I have the docking hold part. Uh, let's just power up the thermal turbojets. Now the thermal turbojets, what they do is basically... Attach them directly to the reactor. It's the only way they work. You have to attach them directly to the reactor. Oh, we're going off the side of the runway. And you see we're already getting into uh, Mac effects coming in from going very close to the sound barrier. Uh, what the thermal turbojets do is basically by attaching them directly to the reactor, using the heat of the reactor to heat up basically atmospheric air. And by heating up, it expands, and then you're just pushing out the back. And because the air is expanding, it's pushing you along in front of it. There's a very crude description of what's happening. Uh, but that's, that's basically it. Now, because we're using the ridiculously powerful uh, antimatter reactors, we're getting a lot of power and we're also getting a lot of heat. And so, by attaching that to there, we're getting like absolute loads of power coming from it. And you can see we're just going supersonic right now. Uh, now, what I'm looking at at the moment is actually the atmospheric scoop. I attached a couple on the front because the idea was that we could uh, pick up argon. But then, of course, there wasn't the argon canister the right size, because the atmospheric scoops allow you to pick up things like argon out of the air. You can pick up things like nitrogen, oxygen, but argon, of course, being pretty damn useful for the plasma thrusters. I was going to pick up that, and then I realised, yeah, we don't actually have argon canisters. Which is a shame. So that should, they're doing nothing right now. Um, as you can see, we're going ridiculously fast. We probably could get up to orbital velocities without even having to bother with the thrusters, just using the, the, uh, the thermal jets. This thing's, this thing's going quite well. Um, now, I, the design was mostly informed by how it looks cool and maybe not so much on actual stability and atmosphere and so on. So I'm not sure how well it'll perform in an actual atmosphere in like a dogfighty kind of situation, but it is capable of doing some pretty cool things. Oh, here we go. We're getting uh, some re-entry effects on the way up, which is pretty damn awesome. Look at that. I'm glad I don't have deadly re-entry installed. Because that would be bad. Uh, and also, it's a very good thing that those, uh, those Hellfire missiles are pretty hard. 
but this this looks awesome. I really do like I really like this craft actually. Spent a lot of time making this, and I'm very pleased with how it turned out. It looks pretty, and it actually works really. Whoa! What's the, the thermal turbo jets? Is that because they were sent hot air? Because I know the interstellar mod, you need a pre-cooler on jet engines to cool the air down when you're going really fast to go into the jet engine turbine. Because otherwise the jet engine turbine overheats, so you need a pre-cooler for the air. But if we're sending the air into a thermal turbojet, it's meant to withstand that high temperature, shouldn't it? It's not a thermal turbojet, it's, sorry, it's just a thermal jet. Um, let's see if we can turn this. I'm going to try and see if we can use the... the... Plasma thrusters alone to try and get us back. Uh, there's no islands near us, so we're kind of screwed. Um, but yeah, uh, surely the 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 thermal jets are designed to kind of take that heat because they basically heat things up directly off the reactor core. Huh. Oh, well, I might redesign it um, and put the. You know, well, I'm not using the atmospheric scoops. I can put the pre core in there. Let's just get rid of our ammo. Just let's just check it all works. Uh, interesting, those missiles went behind us. That's interesting. Hellfire missiles as well. I guess maybe they don't have the same aerodynamics as we do. They probably just conform to uh, the air as soon as they hit it as an independent thing. Let's see if we can pull up now. I'm going to try and pull up and turn us. Uh, Bill and Jebediah are actually flying this craft. I pr it probably shouldn't be. I'm trying to save Bill, Bob and Jebediah for like some really badass mission. Um, but somehow they seem to have snuck aboard this craft. Jeb is just too keen. We are now at 8 kilometers up, and let's just test our cannons. They're working fine. Can we pull up? No, we're having real trouble pulling up. I'm not exactly sure why. This thing can fly in air. Uh, pull up. We're not going that fast. Pull up. Let's see if we can dip the nose and bounce it back up. Nope. Nope. No, this is, this is not going to work. Uh, no. Luckily, I was semi-sensible and installed an ejection system. Again, because I don't trust myself. Bye-bye, highly expensive SSTO. Right, let's redesign that. Hello, here is the redesign. Uh, as you can see, it looks pretty much exactly the same, except for the fact those atmospheric scoops have been replaced with pre-callers. Now, the one in the middle doesn't have a pre-cooler. I have attached an extra um, SAS unit to it, though, so it should be able to... Ooh, it's a very nice... It's, I think that's Lugie in front of us, the back of Lugie's head, and these probably could do a bit of a clean. Hmm. Ooh, look, there's the antimatter stored right next to the cockpit. That's not at all dangerous. And, oh, crap, um... I was just wondering if where we'd get out, if we could get out, and if we got out in a weird place. It looks like we can get out, but now the craft is rolling along underneath us. Uh, we, we need to get back in. Um, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Um, nice moustache, by the way. It's a very nice moustache. Will? If, Will? I'm going to call you Will. Will Kerman. It's a very nice moustache. I approve wholeheartedly. Obviously, the sort of the Second World War British general style of moustache. Now, let's pump the thermal turbojets and take off. It takes off very quickly, but then again, it goes very fast. For oh, wait, we're sliding sideways. We are we're twisting. We are going backwards. We're going forwards. We're going backwards. We're going forwards. Uh, let's just eject. That was unrecoverable. And parachute. Yeah, let's let's try again. Now, this time... Uh, I don't know why that happened last time. I literally just took the thing apart and reattached everything in the same place, and it seems to be working now. But I've no idea what happened last time. Um, gears in. Let's turn our lights on. Yeah, I added some little uh, little green lights so we can, uh, can make sure we can see ourselves, and no one will uh, will obviously collide with us in midair. They'll be looking out. Although, admittedly, they probably won't have time to see us by the time we hit them with this ridiculous mag effect. We will be going pretty damn fast. Um, now, this middle intake, it doesn't have a pre-cooler, so we're going to have to manually turn it off. Let's also accelerate time, because it's a pretty simple ascent. Now, that middle intake uh, doesn't have any pre-cooler, so we're going to have to turn that off manually when we get to a certain altitude. And you can see our thermal turbojets. Each one is putting out 
over 1300 kilonewtons, so over one mega newton each of thrust, which is just crazy. Like we're we're less than 10 kilometers up, and we're already going almost a kilometer a second. Uh, well, 900 meters now, but uh, getting very close to a kilometer, which is just crazy levels of speed. Um, and re-entry effects. And if I turn that middle one off, you can see we are no longer overheating those engines. Excellent. But yes, we are not actually, though, going to be going the long, slow route to Juna. We are going to be meeting a friend. Oh, we're already bloody hell. Uh, we need to, I think, need to point downwards and push our apparatus slightly further around. Um, yeah, our apparatus is crazy high. Over 100 kilometers. Yeah, uh, we are rendezvousing with a interplanetary warp tug. I haven't got a better name for it, uh, which is in Kerbin orbit. Uh, we're going to go meet that, we're going to dock to it, and then it will go to warp incredibly fast and take us to Juna. It will, it's not a combat vessel by any means, it is not designed to get involved in combats. Switching over to the thrusters now, running on quantum vacuum energy by the way, so they don't actually take any material other than just, well, the power of the reactor, which of course consumes antimatter, but they're fairly efficient. Um, but yeah, the, the plasma thrusters are pretty damn good when upgraded to quantum. I really like this. It looks it looks so pretty. I'm very proud of this craft. It does look pretty. Now let's extend our radiators. And let's set up a new note to meet up with our interplanetary warp tug. Now I had a bit of fun trying to work out how the warp system exactly works. And uh, yeah, I think I've got the hang of it now. So we'll see. Um, now what I'm worried about is this craft did turn out to be a little bit bigger than I had first envisioned. And thinking about where it's going to be docking onto the uh, the warp craft might might fit. It might not fit though. That's that's what I'm more worried about. Is that if we can't fit it on, we're probably going to have to I don't know send up some sort of adapter for the larger docking port that is available. You'll see when we get there. Um, let's try and meet up. Uh, mm, mm, push it around. Nope. I think we might have to do another orbit. Well, another part of an orbit. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's that's perfect. Yeah. Right. Let's try and adjust that a little bit. Now, instead of doing a proper maneuver node, I have a tendency when we get just a nice closing cannon like that is just to press the buttons and then just burn them. It's a lot quicker than trying to set up a maneuver node ten minutes ahead of you to try and do something that's probably going to be ten minutes ahead of you anyway. It's a lot quicker. Uh, let's do our inclination change. It looks like yeah. We're doing all this on the quantum vacuum energy, so we haven't actually used any of our lithium supply. Now the idea is when we get into combat, where we need the higher thrust, we start using the actual lithium. Lithium doesn't give us anywhere near as much thrust as say argon would. Argon I think would give us two and a half times the thrust of lithium, which is a shame, but it'll still give us a decent thrust, especially considering we're running two antimatter reactors. And here we go, the warp tug is just below us. So the design of this craft is it's got a lot of missiles, it should be able to take out fairly decent targets and also compete with fighters. It's maybe not as fast as, uh, you know, properly dedicated fast attack ships or whatever, but it can hold its own. It's also got four 30 mm like, cannons, two of which are AP and two of which are high explosive. So you'd expect it to be fairly good. Those are of course from the skillful mod by Infinite Dice. I put a mod like up on that the other day actually if you want to go watch it, which explains a bit more about what's in that mod. Um, this is the first time we're actually trying out in a, in a proper long video. Let's bring her down. Now, the docking ports are the normal 1.25 meter docking ports. They're on the side at the back. So we're going to move over there. Now, as far as we know, the uh, the Mechjeb tanker is unarmed. It's uh, it's merely just for relaying as much fuel as possible as quickly as possible. A bit of an old design. Should be fairly easy to damage and take out. And we are probably overspec for that mission probably quite heavily over -spec. Um Let's line our docking port up. I think we're going to have to turn around, so turn around and careful. I don't want to smash any of those big uh, heat dispensing panels. Uh, I think it's probably got too many on there actually. It probably doesn't need that many. But let's uh, bring it back gently. Not that way. That would be the wrong way. That would be the right way. And... 
No, oh, oh, we'll blow. Whoops. Uh, back up. And then... Yes, we are now attached. Now, this will change the center of mass of the vessel. And the vessel does have three SAS units to try and prevent that being a too much of an issue. But in warp, the center of mass doesn't matter. You just warp in the direction of the warp field. You don't actually have to worry about center of mass. So... We're going to try and use the engine as little as possible. It does have a, a pretty good fusion engine on the back of this ship. So we should be okay from that point of view. But uh, other than that, we're just going to be trying to warp. Just to try and avoid having to put minimal thrust on to avoid flipping out because the center of mass is deviated. We could probably put a second uh, attack ship on, but they are pretty expensive with all the antimatter reactors and the amounts of antimatter and all the weapons and so on. So I think we're okay with just one for now. The Kerbin military is needed elsewhere these days. So we have flying it, Lugi and Will. Now, Will is fairly new. He uh, he was literally recruited from the astronaut complex the other day. Um, whereas Lugi actually is uh, is a pretty veteran Kerbal by now. He has flown a grand total of one mission, which uh, is above the average for most Kerbals at the KSC. Uh, he flew the mission successfully. He flew his craft back, and while his craft did not survive, he did, which is highly unusual, uh, and it's definitely a plus point. That's very pretty. It's very pretty. Now, I'm trying to figure out how to use this warp drive. I think we are oh, we're warping to Juno, so we, I think we have to warp past the sun. There we go. And now we want to be traveling in the same... Planar direction? Is it planar direction? No, planar is... It's not planar, it's... Uh, same... Non... non curve space... Non... Uh, circular direction. I, we're not worrying about going clockwise and clockwise. We literally want the same direction. So... Now we want to be able to lose some speed, I think. We're going... Yeah, way too fast. I think Duna orbits at about 7,000 meters per second. So let's drop the speed on the warp reactor and go forwards. And by moving in really close to the sun, we will be burning off all of our speed as we're just moving away from it now. So let's move into about 7,000 meters per second. Yeah, 7,000, 9,000, 7,000, Point to target, because we're just being, once we get 7,000, we're just going to walk straight to Juna. And that should be the same orbital velocity as Juna, so we should be very close by. Now, I did actually go a little bit low. I think I went to about five, six, six point four thousand. So we're not perfect. Uh, our orbit's fairly close though, so all we need to do is now walk towards uh, Juna and try and quite fill in influence. I'm still pretty rusty with the warp drive, admittedly, so I think we're probably going to end up burning the main engine just to try and get closer and actually get captured. But you can actually get captured entirely and get a really decent orbit without actually using the uh, the engines. You can just do it with the warp drive, but I'm not that pro, I'll, I'll admit it. Ah, and there we go, right, we are in the sphere of I think... Okay, I'm not good enough with the warp drive, really. I think I'm probably going to end up just burning retrograde. I'm just going to get us a little bit closer, and then I'm going to point retrograde and just burn a little bit with the fusion drive. I mean, if we have to burn, then we leave sphere of influence because we're burning at such a low rate to avoid central mass slipping over. We can always just zoom back towards Juna. So I'm going to try and set up a, a really close, uh, close approach. Preferably not too inclined. And then I'm just going to use the, uh, the fusion engine just to try and resolve that. And just not crash into anything on the way. If you hit anything while you're going at warp, you die instantly. So that includes the atmosphere around Juna. So I'm being very careful not to actually hit Juna, and particularly Ike, because you could quite easily forget Ike. So this has been it for this episode. Um, the combat will come in the next episode, and look forward to it, because we are going to have to use our new fangled technology and all these missiles and guns and so on to take out a nice, big, juicy, explosive fuel tanker. If you like this video, please like, and if you're not subscribed, please consider it. Stay shiny.